Good afternoon. Can you all hear me? You will have forgotten my name by the time you have your dinner tonight, but you will not forget this in the next two or three days, this introduction. Why? Because I am different and I stand out. That's why you will not forget it. So how did, and that's the first item in my professional toolkit. Doesn't matter whether you're an engineer, lawyer, or scientist, or whatever. You have to stand out. What did I do? How did I discover this? I got myself a first class honors from Manchester University and it was sheer hard work. And what did I do to get that first class honors? We did a very simple experiment. Just boil exactly like that. You can see from the date, this is half a century ago. Boil the water, measure the temperature, put some salt in it, boil it again, and measure the temperature again. Even P6 students in Singapore know that the temperature of the second is higher than the temperature of pure water. So, fine, that's great, but then I had to explain why does it behave like that. Well, that was easy. Went to the library, hundreds of books tell you why does the temperature change, and it's something to do with uh, energy of solution, great. Then I said to myself, can I predict the temperature of the water based on the properties of the salt? Nothing. I don't know, I've not looked recently whether there's anything there in the literature, nothing. So I did that little bit extra, that little bit extra, and put that in my report. Consequence, I got noticed. I got noticed by my tutor, by my lecturer, by my professor, by the dean. Just that little bit. And I got my first class honors. And my career was off. Had a trajectory like that. Usain Bolt, he's, he's not faster than my career. Right, so. Two things I learned. At Manchester University, I learned engineering, they say, but more importantly, I learned how to learn because you don't know what you learn today and you don't know what you might, might want to use tomorrow. So I learned how to learn and then being a member of the Institution of Mechanical Engineers, they put some pressure on me to put some discipline on continue to learn. I have to continue to learn. Doesn't matter whether you're an engineer, as I said earlier, or a dentist or a doctor, you've got to continue to learn, and now even faster, because things are moving so fast. Right, so what did I do with my education? I went to work for a company, American company, based in the UK, making materials handling equipment, and they were making this innocent looking pallet truck, it's called a pallet truck, it's got two fingers, and that was a design imported from USA, and it wouldn't work in Europe because the, these fingers are so wide, they wouldn't enter the European pallet here. The US spec was 10 inch, one ton capacity, Europe wanted seven inch, one ton capacity, US offered seven inch, three quarter ton, and I designed it seven inch, one ton. Those of you who are engineer might understand this, but I'll 
to explain it in layman's terms. What I did was very simple, not rocket science. It's very simple theory of structures. I just redistributed the material so that the top layer and the bottom layer equally shared the work done to support the load. That's all. This was very imbalanced. The bottom layer was like it working like crazy, three, four times harder than the top layer. And you're costing a bomb. Result, went into production, sales of that truck for my company rocketed. But before we got to that step, I had to prove it. I had to prove it. Here I am, nearly a fresh graduate from university, telling designers in USA of materials handling equipment how they can design a pallet truck to meet the specification. I had to prove it. I'll show you the next slide, but you don't have to really. It's an, it's an engineering slide, but I'll illustrate it by using this hanger. What that slide says is that if you deform an item which they call the elastic range, elastic range, it'll come back to its original shape. But if you deform it beyond the elastic range, it's useless. Fit for the bin. Imagine your car goes over a pothole. You don't want it to come out all bent and twisted, do you? So, it is the science behind that I use to make analog simulations. There are digital simulations these days. I used analog simulation because that was the only tool available to me. I'll show you two more things before I demonstrate what I actually did. This, will, this, this is not invented. This is real stuff. I have a piece of metal here. I bend it. Can anybody see it bending? No. Because you need strain gauges, data loggers, transducers, and God knows what else to find out whether this is bending. I have a piece of foam. You can probably just about see it bending, a polystyrene foam. Now, I have this. So, right at the back, can you see it bending? Can you see it come back straight? This is the material behaving like any other ma engineering material, but it's got a mechanical amplifier built into it. I don't need data loggers. I don't need transducers and strain gauges. So, I made my models using these materials, and I'll demonstrate to you here and now what the effect was. Those of your engineers will understand what a simply supported beam is. This, I'm going to make a simply supported beam. I put this beam in there. Simply supported means it's only supported on two sides. I put this beam in. I put a weight on it. This, in fact, you can see this on the next slide as well. This deflects more than this. And this is, this represents the shape of the finger. This is the shape I showed you at the top, which is very inefficient. This is a shape which is very efficient. Right. Then, to make it more dramatic, I made it out of my amplifier, built-in amplifier material. Put a weight on it. Put a weight on that. Which one deflects more? Right? 
argument was finished. No more argument. How can he prove it? Is he qualified enough and old enough to be able to make these recommendations? And I got some additions to my toolkit. I grabbed the opportunity to redesign something. Opportunities are there in all directions if you look and if you're hungry enough. They're there. I am the respect of the marketing. And you say, how do you know? Because I got onto the Christmas mailing list of the marketing and the sales department. And they don't give you anything for free, not, never. Not the employees. Customers, yes. I won the trust of the people in the company. How do I know I won the trust? Because now they would come to me, seek my opinion, seek my advice, and listen to me. Great stuff. I'm happy, they're happy. And I got noticed. And you'll say, how do I know I got noticed? The vice president of the American company offered me to go and manage his design office. Now that's a notice. So I increased my toolkit to add those. As I keep saying, it doesn't have to be engineering. I use my engineering knowledge to sell the idea. But these are required by any professional no matter which field, or any employee. Right, in my infinite wisdom, I did not take the job to go to America. I took a job to go to Redland, which make one billion tiles a year, 18,000 employees, four billion turnover, big company. When I joined, I was a tadpole in a big Redland Ocean. When I, during my tenure, I became a whale in the Redland Technical Pond. Now this is a question about, do you go work for a big company or a small company? That doesn't matter, it's where you are working, which part of the work company you are working is important. I, And what happened next? Before I tell you what happens next, I have to give you a very 30 second or one minute lesson on tile making. Tiles are, uh, otherwise the context doesn't work. Many different shapes, but this is the important bit here. A tile sitting on a roof looks very innocent. The shape, nothing. But when you look under, underneath it, it's, it's as complex as any article you can name to me. Any article. It's, it's got very complex shapes. It's got very complex molds to build on, uh, make the shape on. Very complex tools to build the shape on. Match any industry, aerospace, automotive, Shipping, you name it, it'll match it. And this is the, the punchline. These concrete tiles are sitting on your roof. If you got, Singapore has them as well. They're sitting on your roof with no sealant. It's tile on tile. It's guaranteed to last 75 years in durability and guaranteed that there will be no water penetration for 75 years. When once in 75 year event means there's on, one storm comes every 75 years, it's so severe, it destroys things. Water won't penetrate. They are that accurate. Not only that, tile made in year one has to fit with a tile made in year 20, maybe year 10, because people have the habit of renovating, extending. They do break, people do silly things on them. You got to repair them. 
So this tile which was installed 15 years ago, you go to our factory, buy a tile, and it'll fit, and it'll still keep the water out. Not many industries can claim that. And I'll talk about that a bit later as well. So that's about the tile. So it's important that this, it may not sound very sexy, but I tell you, it's got challenges. Now, the, a bit about the tile plant. A tile plant is a fairly long building. If you're at this end and something is going on on this end, you don't know what's going on unless somebody tells you. No cameras in those days. I arrived at my new work, suited, booted. My boss gave me the car of my new, uh, the keys of my new car, and he said, Kogi, I'm sorry, but I haven't got a job for you. Oh. So I said, well, you go and visit some tile plants two, three days, and I'll have fixed it. Cut a long story short, I ended up in a tile factory for three months. Three months. And that had impact on my toolkit. The first thing they was I grabbed the opportunity to go and work. I didn't complain. Hey, I'm a manager. I can't work in a tile factory. Now, so I grabbed the opportunity. When I first arrived, the workers were very, very suspicious of me because they said, oh, another boy from the center come to tell us what we, we should do. But in time, I started to dress like them, have the same safety clothes, helmet, toe tackles. I worked their shift. I ate in their canteen, worked their time, and they started to trust me. Now they would tell me if there's a stoppage at the other t end of the factory and I'm the other, why it has stopped. Not only that, they shared with me with information on how to run the tile plant 24 seven, which is not in the manuals, it's in their heads. And that is difficult to get out. So I won that trust and I got help from them. I earned the respect of my colleagues. When I went, finally went to manage the, the design office which I'd come, my colleagues knew that probably I knew more about tile making than they did. Because they, even in 20 years, wouldn't have spent a collection of 33 months work of time in a tile works. So, won the respect instantly, no problem. I got noticed. HR were watching me. The tile plant manager was watching me. The board was watching me. Yeah, they've given me a brand new flashy car and writing my paycheck and I'm doing nothing for three months. So somebody was paying attention, watching me. So I got noticed. And most of all, my knowledge increased by a step change. Completely new field of knowledge. I had it. Nobody could take it away from me. So what did I do next? OK. I then started. I migrated from designing machinery and plant to designing the concrete product itself. Now that's a completely new field for me. So there, this is where new learning comes in. When I started, tiles were weighing 5.3 kilograms each. And by the time I left, we could make the same performance tile at 4.3 kilograms. And it was done with introducing new technologies and new tools, CAD, computer, computer design, computer aided manufacturing, finite element analysis, genetic algorithms. New terms, very, very new terms, quarter of a century ago. 
they are everyday tools now. Okay. Had to justify all that lot. Was very, very, very expensive. So, this slide is full of equations. I'm not going to teach you equations. I'll only make a few points. If you have a big problem, how does one solve a big problem? Cut it up. Thank you very much, sir. You cut it up into smaller sections and solve that. That's what finite element, element analysis is. It breaks it up into small parts, analyzes it, and then measures the effect of that onto the next part. When I designed the first style, I didn't have a computer. I didn't even have a calculator. I had to use my slide rule. I don't know whether you've ever seen a slide rule. And this was my Google. So I did cut it up into small segments, but I couldn't cut it up too small because I'd be wearing my slide rule out to calculate it. CAD, argument one. Make a CAD model, you can slice it up as many times as you want. FEA, we have an expert in amongst us on FEA at the back here, uh, Clive will introduce you. I'll tell you a story. I attended a symposium organized by Clive, NAFAM symposium, it had speakers talking about FEA simulation, design tools and all that, all from all over the world. And there was a gentleman, very clever, gentleman who introduced a novel way of designing a beam and he was using nature, the lattice system that nature uses to design a beam. Very light, very strong. I talked to him during the coffee break and I said to him, assume I have a perfect material, that the material has no defects and I want to design a component to the factor of safety of one. What are my risks? I still strive to work towards that answer. I haven't got an answer, but I'm still working at it. And I'm going to challenge you guys to think about it. He didn't have an answer, obviously. Then I said, how do you validate it? They said, we, we do strain energy calculations. And ah. Now that's where the problem lies. This is a fundamental equation for the theory of structures. 99.9% .9 times people use it to find applications and it goes in that direction. FEA, you make parts, you go to Google, you go to a, to a lecture theater, they'll say that's the formula if you want to calculate the stress strain and all that, right? And you use that. However, I thought in this direction, how did the formula come out in the first place? It's a mathematical formula. Pure mathematicians solve it in 10 seconds flat, no problem. But to apply to engineering solutions, there are 10 assumptions built up into arriving at that. And if you want to design to a factor of safety of one, you want to address those assumptions. If you cannot address those assumptions, you cannot design. It, we had a fairly friendly chat after that. Genetic algorithms. Again, I was on the same platform giving a talk at NTU and no, at uh, one of the universities, I forget, and there was a professor for NTU we were both waiting for our turns to come and we started talking. And he mentioned genetic algorithms, GA. Oh, I said, oh, okay, yeah, what about it? So we are trying to promote it. I told him I introduced that as a tool in my company 25 years ago. He nearly fell off his chair. Point here is there are opportunities. If you're hungry enough, you will find them. I found genetic algorithms by accident. And I won't go through that because I've got very short time 
in this presentation. But I can talk to any one of you if you wish to talk to me uh, after the event. Uh, I'd be quite happy to talk to you. Right, next. Ah, this is a, this is a I've got lots of stories to add. This is a nice one. Redland built a brand new tile factory on a greenfield site costing 12 million sterling. We are talking of those days, 50 million Singapore. Brand new factory. They could make what we call the main tile, because main tile on a roof, bulk of the roof is covered with the main tile. But to finish the roof, you have to have fittings. They complete the edges of the roof. Without that, the roof doesn't work. It leaks. They could make the tiles, main tiles, no problem. Fitting tiles, the mold just cracked in the tile machine. Yard is filling up, making half a million tiles a week at 140 pieces per minute, three shifts, and nothing is going out because you haven't got the fittings. Panic, panic, panic. Brainstorm sessions, let's talk to universities, let's talk to consultants. Anybody, anybody who knows anything about tile making or tile design, talk to them. Everything looked six to eight months away with a ton of scrap at the end of it, all those scrap molds and whatever. I used my friend, this material here. These are actual photos of what I showed to my CEO. That's how they were, in a bit of cardboard and a foam model. And I demonstrated by the foam model that the failure was occurring here you can see this bending, and that's how exactly the real molds were failing. And I said, we can reinforce it to stop that failure. And I've got those models here outside of the meeting. If you want to look, you can look at them. Within a month, all the molds in the factory were modified. The factory was running. You have to have respect. You will have to have earned respect. You will have to have won the trust to be able to do that type of thing. Then I taught myself automation. Self-taught myself automation. Removed all the clouds of release agent from the tile machine, made it a proper machine too. Removed the dust clouds from the cement mixer, in fact, even removed the man from it. Put all the proper dust control, saved money. Each tile plant could make a very various shapes, ranging from anywhere of these. And when they changed the profile from one shape to the other, it used to take 30 minutes or more. Reduced that time to four minutes. And there was a record. They built, they printed these shots in honor of the work we did. One minute and 38 seconds was the fastest anybody ever changed the profile in a tile room. All that was achieved with automation. At that time, solid state switches were coming. PLCs, DC drives, controls using those. All the bang bang systems were removed and controlled acceleration, controlled deceleration, controlled the product exactly where you wanted to stop or start from. So plant speeds increased from 90 to 140 pieces per minute. Huge impact on profit. Inverter drive, PLC control, solid state switching increased my knowledge, certainly improved the efficiency of the plant. Breakage, you know, remind, you're running with your sandcastle on your hand, you stop suddenly. Breakage reduced by 2%. One billion tiles they are making. Remember, 2% may be not a very big number. Profile change, times change from 30 to, to four minutes. 
And the one which I really savor out of that is we made a change to the quality of the life of the workers and their families. I didn't like to work in there. Why should I expect anybody else to be working in that environment? So that is what engineers can do, change the quality of life. Save the environment, save the planet by using less resource and all that. What about the people? Okay, I, I haven't got the slide next. Okay, I was going to show you a sand pit where the... <coughs> I'll skip that, uh, the slide has got mis gone missing. Now, this is a, an example of communications and empowerment and sharing. I was working on a project which was my patent. I don't know, I've got about 10 patents, I forget, I lose count of them. And uh, I needed half a million pounds sterling to do the development in one tranche, and normal submission for such request was 50,000, 60,000. I wanted half a million. The idea was not novel. The idea was to put very good material at the top, which is the aesthetics part of it, which you guys see every day, and put functional material at the bottom. But the extrusion process or the making process was so violent that it mixed it all up. And the in invention was to find a solution to that. It so happened that the main board visited the technical division one afternoon. Lots of presentations were set up, and mine was one of them. I chose to make my presentation at the tile machine we were working on. And my MD said, Kogi, I'll give you one piece of advice. Get your points out in the first 45 seconds. If you don't, you'll lose them. These captains of industry are smart people. If you throw a lot of jargon at them, they'll see through that fog. You cannot fool them. 45 seconds. So I wrote this one slide, hand wrote it at the time. We make one million tiles, one billion tiles, 4.5 billion concrete, and each ton of tile this is the cost of this material. This is the composition. We put four pounds of sand, 16 pounds of cement, and 12 pounds of pigment in it. And I said, I'm going to save four to 40 percent of the 12, because I'm not going to put pigment here. Immediately, the question came, Kogi, how are you going to do it? Great. They were hooked. No, then I could take all my time to tell everything. Now, this is where the sharing and the empowerment come. I had my technicians and my design colleagues at the site. I wanted to give them the opportunity, their two minutes of glory with the board. Most of my patents, although I'm the inventor, we have co patentees on it. Just imagine a technician working in a shop. The, the technician can have very good ideas, no problem. But whether they will be able to ever patent it, very, very difficult. Because to patent something, you have to have a very, very narrow find. The world is full of very many clever people. And to patent something is extremely difficult. And now these people get their name on a patent there's no better thank you than that. These guys would do anything for me. Honestly, they would do anything in terms of work. I put up no problem with it. That's the last slide of my presentation. So that's my toolkit. Get noticed. Take opportunities. Opportunities are there. 
educate yourself, increase your knowledge, earn respect, win trust, and ethics. Very important. One last story. I was developing a product in the USA, and the USA has a very, very stringent fire test. What they do is they take a tile, put a ton of coal or they call it bran, but it's pieces of wood, dried up pieces of wood. Light fire to the wood and the tile should withstand that for 45 minutes. Very tough test. And our tiles were not doing that. And one time, luckily, we had a marginal pass. The certifier said, I can pass it. And I said, no. I wouldn't have those tiles on my house. There was tremendous pressure from the, the peers saying, look, we have passed the test. Let's get on and start making them. Ethics. I wouldn't have that on my house. Why should I let others have it on their house? End of my presentation. Any questions? No, because, yeah, I don't release the product because it's marginal. Just imagine we put it on the roof, and the roof, they have forest fires in California, for example. Something falls on it, burns it, and the house burns down. Well, mentality, well, it depends. It, no, it depends on the individual. I'm saying I, I, I had high ethics, ethical standards. My institution says I should have very high eth ethical standards. If you join IES, Institute of Engineers in Singapore, they say you should have a high ethical standard. And you won't be certified as a chartered engineer if you don't. But there would be people who would take a chance. I won't. That's the difference. Okay. If you're not completely bored by now, I, I'll, I'll show you this last slide. And I'll, you've seen these on the streets of Singapore, right? When they first came out, I looked at the first bicycle that came out. I said, good grief, would I ride it? Because this is one bike which is going to hit the curbs, on and off the curbs, more than any other bike. Not, we're not talking about BMX riders who will do crazy things. And this tube was so small, it worried me. So I went home, and the way I am, first I ba built a base reference model and looked at where is the weakest point of the bike. I did that, and there is the answer. I don't need CAD, CAM, or whatever, solid model. I got tons of them, more of them, if you want to talk to them. But you have been a tremendous audience. Thank you very much. OK. Oh, nobody wants to go. Right. <laughs> you want more? Oh, well, OK. If you have time, I don't think I'm pushed to be, because I didn't know whether I'll be allowed to stay in the room or not. I can, I can carry on. Yeah. Because I might have been, uh, I don't think no, anybody is following us. Oh, okay, good. I'm, uh, I'm flying back to Manila the next day. So oh, okay. Look, this is the O4 bike. Yeah. Right? You, 
usually I give this talk in 45 minutes. They allowed me only 25. I've taken 30. So I think this, this was the first bike I saw. And I said to myself, wow, will I really ride it? OK, I, I think it's a bit unfair because these guys who designed these are not slouches, so they must have done some homework to make sure that they would work. But it, it certainly rang alarm bells in my mind, right? I have to repair it so many times, it keeps breaking. And it's now a lot more stiffer than it originally is because I have to put stiffness in here. As you can see, I have to patch it up. But let me repeat this as well. Your model here is a solid. That model is a hollow. Cannons, yeah, yeah. yeah. So cannons are stronger than a solid, right? No, they, they are lighter for the same strength. Oh, lighter. For the same strength. But the beauty of these types of models is as long as you do it the same to each family, it doesn't matter. It gives you the answer. It gives you the trend, right? If I, if I used a hollow there and a solid there, that'll be unfair. But I'm using solid, and it tells me this is stronger than that. So you're looking at pure structure-wise? Structure-wise, where the deflections are. You try to f calculate the deflection of that using one of the solid modelers that you got. It'll take you a, a fair time to actually make the model first, and then you have to apply the boundary conditions. Where are the forces coming from? Where are they going? So this is stronger than that? No, no. this is this stronger. One, this one is yeah. stronger. Yeah. Yes. And this, this, then I started to play with what would I do if I was to uh, just advance it from there. Oh, then I, an I beam kind yeah, of thing. There, were, there are some bikes with the I-beam on the, on the street as well. Not many, but there are some. And then have you seen one bike that doesn't have one of these? Uh, one of these members, yes, yes. Yes, that's yeah, yes, yeah, that's, I've seen those. <laughs> yeah, like that. Yeah, there. <laughs> oh, yeah, cantilever. Cantilever wheel. Yeah. Yes, yeah, cantilever. It doesn't have a chain. No. Oh, it's got a gear inside. Oh, gear. Ah, mobile. Mobile. So the point here is that I'm not saying you shouldn't use mod models and simulation is very rife. But I'm saying I don't have the ask, but I can find the answers. That was impressive. Yeah. Oh, it's, a, it's so simple in terms of engineering. Just shift. You are engineers or studying to be engineers? Yeah. Okay, well, it's, it's a matter of neutral axis. If you understand neutral axis in the old one, the neutral axis is way high, and I just brought the neutral axis to the middle. That's all. Right, well, I've enjoyed talking to you guys.